Hello, my name is William Kumwemba, and this is Business Time. It's a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. And coming up in the program today, pension areas rise to 27 billion kwacha as the central bank gets tough on defaulters. Also in the program, ILO laments rising estimates on child labor across the globe. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned if you could. Excuse me, madam. Stop billing. I'm taking back all these goods to the shelves. Uh -uh. What's wrong, sir? Never mind. Uh, I have just changed my mind. Excuse me. I just noticed you returned all the goods you meant to buy. What went wrong? Some of these products are not originally made here in Malawi. But these goods have a lot good growth and get them. Hmm. And we manufacture them ourselves. Uh -huh. Then it means you're not registered with Buy Malawi Strategy. This logo here with the tick is not correct. How? All products and services registered with Buy Malawi Strategy have an original logo approved by government through the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism that really authenticates your product as a Malawian product. Now, once you register, your product and service will be recognized as Malawian. Look, we must buy Malawi to build Malawi. You can find out more from Buy Malawi Secretariat or call them on 01-770-244-0993-707-729 or 0999-528-510. You can also simply email info at by Malawi dot MW. By Malawi, Kondendi Kunyani Razach Malawi, Gamma Gula. Hello and welcome. This is Business Time and in our main story in the program today, the Reserve Bank of Malawi says pension arrears have risen to about 26.9 billion Malawi kwacha. The central bank has since gotten tough on firms that have defaulted for quite some time by giving a 21-day at Mertam. Otherwise, the central bank says the companies face uh, tough penalties. Now, our journalist Yamikan Kajaje was in a team of uh, officials from the central bank who toured some of the companies that are reportedly defaulting uh, pension arrears and has since filed this report. The bank has revealed that within the next two weeks it will visit some 24 companies with outstanding arrears. On Monday, RBM visited RK Plastics Limited, Omega Security, and Fargo Limited to deliver notices. RBM Chief Examiner for Non-Prudential Compliance, Pension and Insurance Supervision, Paul Nurenda, says the vice has serious consequences on the economy. The effects are twofold. The first one, uh, it comes down to the employees, the pension members. Some of them, they would like to access their pension contributions, but uh, they cannot get the benefits just because the employer has not been remitted. So the law says uh, one of the objectives is that the patient members must access patient benefits as and when due. So if anyone is due for retirement, he goes to the administrator and is being told that uh, the employer was not remitting patient contributions. So that's the uh, first uh, effect in that uh, patient members struggle uh, despite having pension because they can't get it. And then to the economy at large, when contributions are limited to a patient fund, the conditions are invested and the, uh, the investments basically they are there also for uh, economic growth. Um, you, you find that uh, some of the infrastructure development they are achieved because you have patient funds investing in these projects. So if the employer is, is holding the funds it means in terms of uh, uh, the economy at large, uh, the economy also uh, suffers. Fargo Limited General Manager Ahmad Sukrain says their business was affected by the general economic slowdown experienced in recent years. It's been difficult with the slowdown. Uh, we've gone through a tough time during COVID as well. Um, but at the moment we can see that uh, the sector is gaining traction. Um, uh, backlog payments are being looked into uh, and uh, with that we are confident that we can now start catching up on uh, the various backlogs that uh, we are owed out to. The Pensions Act 2010 makes pension funds remittance mandatory and under it employers are mandated to enroll their employees on a pension scheme. 
Now, the local private sector says is geared for competition as the African continental free trade area becomes effective on 1st of July this year. Uh, for quite some time, there's been fear that the country could be one of the dumping sites uh, once the uh, pacts uh, become effective as Malawi remains a predominantly importing and consuming nation with its private sector remaining relatively small. But players in the industry say they're geared for competition come what may. Our journalist Justin Mkweu has the whole story in this report. Malawi's participation and profitability has for long been put on a triple beam balance against its infant manufacturing sector and a struggling export base which depends highly on exporting raw agricultural products with tobacco being the main export. Even though not so much has been done to improve hurdles facing the manufacturing sector and widen the export base, MCCCI President James Chimwaza said in an interview that even though they are still in the process of enlightening members on the pact, they are ready for the commencement of trade on July 1. He said that currently the Secretariat has given information to chambers who are transferring the information to the chapters in the southern, central and northern regions. He added that some levers have been removed on some products and that is part of gelling up so that they are competitive and all sides are working to arrive at an equilibrium and the budget proposal has addressed the competition of local products. AFCFTA is an African market where 54 African member states will be trading among each other with reduced or removed taxes on certain products. Chamber for Small and Medium Businesses Executive Secretary James Chiuzzi said the SME's sector is also ready even though it will be a slow and gradual process especially to make the products competitive. He added that the country still has got a lot of products which are not value added. So this has been a wake up call for them so that they should enhance efforts in value addition so that they can compete at the international market. Minister of Trade Sosten Gwengwe said the government is also ready and committed because the budget which is being deliberated in parliament has been designed to incorporate the pact and improve the manufacturing sector. The pact was ratified by different countries in January this year for Malawi to allow the movement of goods and services between countries without hurdles. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. We'll be right back, and when we get back, the International Labour Organization fears of rising cases of child labor. That's when we get back. I've got that feeling, that linger feeling. 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 When we. Made from fresh local fruits of mulberry, jambula, rosella, strawberry, plum, white guava and white peach and naturally fermented for one or two years in our cool cellar comes Malawi's own Linga. Here's to a smooth taste, unsurpassed quality and distinctive fruit wines. When in Malawi, it has to be Linga. Welcome back. The International Labour Organization has lamented of rising cases of child labor across the globe. Now, how is the situation in the country? This is a question our journalist Yamigan Kajaje posed to officials from the Employers Conservative Association of Malawi, ECAM, to find out the magnitude of child labor cases in the country and has since filed this report. 
The report further shows that sub-Saharan Africa has the highest prevalence and largest number of children in child labor at 86.6 million. International Labor Organization Senior Project Officer Dylan Von Tromp says the trends could impact on the country's national development agenda. Uh, some time ago, the ILO together with the International Organization of Employers, the IOE, which represents employers' organizations globally, including ECOM, which is affiliated. And there are many good reasons that businesses may want to take action on child labor. Access to investment, access to exports, access to markets. Uh, from a national development perspective, the, the fact that you have a lot of children in child labor in a given country, this is depriving those children of its future, but it's also depriving employers of a skilled pipeline of labor coming in. People with the, the skills that match the needs of business. And taken as a whole, eliminating child labor will contribute to national and economic development. Economic commentator Bechani Chereni holds that Malawian businesses with a background of child labor may lose out on business with potential buyers. Point, and I was saying that the, the third point is that some countries who are very serious with issues of child labor, then they will take a, a, a decision. They will say that, listen, uh, we, 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 we don't want to deal with you, especially in an environment where you're using child labor, then they may end up not buying our commodities. Even if we are going to produce as much, but they, they, the market may not be there. So it is going to be a waste of energy, a, a waste of time, a waste of resources. And that's not what we need. Uh, so it's better to comply with the uh, world um, um, requirements, because when we do so, we will be assured of a proper market for our exports. ECOM Executive Council member Annie Javula concedes that the trends were exacerbated by the COVID pandemic. Even as employers, we are struggling because I'm sure you are all aware of the effects of productivity has gone down, companies have resulted in losses, and actually even some companies have actually closed down, even others have even scaled down the number of employees that they are recruiting. As such, it has had an impact even on the families, even on the households, even on the earning, earning, earning ability of um, our, our, our people. So, it's actually had, COVID-19 has had an impact, had an impact. and this has, uh, trans, uh, uh, has even gone further in that uh, because of our households wanting to survive, they've now involved their children to work so that they bring extra income to the home, which uh, we are coming against to say that no, please, let the children go to school and not, let, let, the children should not be the, uh, the bread makers. The International Labour Organization further emphasized that the trends are incompatible with the country's development agenda, the Malawi 2063. Now, as a way of trying to curb child labour in the tea industry, players in the sector have since launched a two-year initiative which would see complete elimination of child labour cases in the sector. They say this should be from uh, the factory to the very end of the uh, supply chain when a consumer gets the product. We have the whole story in this report. Tea Association of Malawi Vice Chairperson Atu Galinga says the association is working with all key players in the tea supply chain towards addressing the vice. The initiative is the eradication of child labor in the tea supply chain. When we say supply chain, we mean from the field to the factory, to the middlemen, to the buyers, to the consumers, right up to the consumers. We would like to see no incidents of child labor. Yes. So this is a program which the Tea Association is uh, embarking on together with ILO. In the tea industry, we have been working on this initiative since the year 2000. So it is, as far as we know, it is completely el eliminated. But up to when the national IDs were introduced, it was difficult to establish that really the age of an individual by the time they came to look for a job. We used to rely 
on information supplied by the village headman. But since the incident of the uh, coming in of national IDs, we rely on the information on the national IDs. However, because of that time that uh, some people were employed without that, we there could be some incident of child labor. That is in the in the field and, and, and factory time, but we believe it's all eliminated. He said since the year 2000, industry players have been working tirelessly towards ensuring that no child is employed in the tier states. According to Kalinga, the battle is close to being won, as estimates now show that child labor is completely eliminated in most estates across the country. In December 2020, TAML signed an agreement with ILO to accelerate action towards elimination of child labor in the sector. ILO Senior Project Officer Dylan Van Tromp said the sector has a critical role to play in the fight against child labor. So the tea industry of Malawi has a vital role to play in ensuring that Malawi becomes a country which is free of child labor, a child labor free country. And in fact, the international community through the Sustainable Development Goals set 2025, 2025, just four years from now, as the global deadline by which we should eliminate all forms of child labor around the world. And the government of Malawi last year, they launched a national action plan, the goal of which is precisely to ensure that Malawi does its part as a pathfinder country under the Sustainable Development Goals initiative to ensure that we meet that deadline on time and on target. The voice of the pupils is simple and straightforward. Do not employ us yet. Send us to school. If we children go to school and do well in our education, we can be the future, of the future leaders of our country. Therefore, it is, impo it is important not to employ children. A survey by the National Statistical Office in 2015 revealed that 38% of children between the ages of 5 and 17 were involved in child labor. The majority of them were in the agricultural sector. The public procurement and disposal of assets in the country has issued a warning shot to public officials uh, to desist from any kind of uh, graft in as far as tendering and uh, offering of public contracts is concerned. This is according to John Susbanda, who is board chairperson for the uh, PPDA. Uh, he caught up with our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi in this interview. Uh, what, well, there are quite a number of them. Uh, I think the key ones, uh, as we have seen from the PPDA, uh, the lack of transparency in some of the processes, uh, some, some dishonest on the part of suppliers and some public officers. Sometimes you have a challenge of uh, lack of good training on the part of procurement officers and controlling officers. Uh, so there are a number of challenges that we have noticed as, uh, as PPDA. Well, look, the, the law is quite clear in terms of uh, the procedure that we're supposed to follow and uh, the principles by which uh, we are supposed to uh, uh, procure for public entities. So they're supposed to be... Uh, they're supposed to be honest people, they're supposed to be transparent, they must achieve value for money, and there must be efficiencies in the systems. If we follow these principles, I, I am pretty sure uh, that uh, the challenges that we do face in public procurement would be a thing of the past. Okay, so there, um, there are a number of initiatives that uh, we as PPD have put together, uh, which we believe that we, together with other uh, states, institutions would be able to bring about the change that everybody wants to see in public procurement. So one thing is training, as we are doing here, uh, training members uh, of the board of directors of Blanta Water Board. Uh, so if we believe that if we have all these senior people trained in public procurement processes, then it will bring about the change what, that we want to see. And also, um, honest uh, implementation of the act and uh, all laws. So if people do not abide by the procedures that are set in the Public Procurement Act and the regulations made thereunder, then there must be consequences, either uh, disciplining them administratively or indeed uh, bringing about um, 
criminal prosecution in, in case that they offend uh, parts of the law. So these are some of the things we, 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 we are looking into uh, as PPDA. But uh, as I'm saying, we, we can't at PPDA ourselves be the lone voice in um, in a forest of indifference, so to say. We must all, as, um, as state institutions, but also as, uh, as yourselves, as the media, uh, civil society organizations, uh, and even ordinary citizens must be vigilant. Uh, and I've seen of late, uh, there's more interest from members of the public, social media activists, to, uh, to raise issues what they see uh, as misprocurements or misconduct or malfeasance in, in public procurement. And this, I think, is going to go, go a long way to making public officers remember that everybody is watching. And I think that is a good thing that things are happening this way. Of course, there are misunderstandings here and there. Things are misreported, so to say. But I think that, by and large, the public interest in, in, in public procurement now uh, is going to go a long way to making the process more transparent, more efficient, and more effective. Well, that story also brings us to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Stay safe, but always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Goodbye for now. <laughs>